Let's talk about the structural components of your, your model rocket. There's three basic structural pieces that you're going to need to incorporate into your rocket, body tubes, nose cones, and fins. One thing that is very important to consider at the beginning of designing your model rocket is remember that these components must be made of lightweight, non-metallic materials. The NAR safety code requires that. So for body tubes, the body tubes that you see here are made of cardboard wrapped with a, um, a cellophane wrap. They're very common in size for the other components of model rockets and readily available in, in hobby stores. We recommend that you use paper body tubes as opposed to some of the other materials that you may find. We also recommend that you not use the cardboard tubes that you may find around your house that include wrapping paper tubes or paper towel tubes. They just tend not to be strong enough and also are going to cause you problems down the road when you're trying to size the other components. In terms of nose cones, they come in a variety of shapes and materials as well. You can have plastic nose cones as well as balsa nose cones. The shape is pretty much a personal preference and the size of the nose cone needs to be sized to the body tube that you've selected. The third basic component are your fins. Fins come in a variety of shapes and sizes. Two of the more commonly used shapes of fins include elliptical fins or swept-back fins, and these have been found to be very efficient in terms of model rocketry. The sizing of your fins is going to be something that you want to work with your computer program and use that to help you optimize the size to become, make your rocket a stable rocket, as well as you can use the cutout method that was talked about previously to optimize the size of your fins to again ensure that you have a stable flight. When selecting the material for your fins, we recommend that you use wood materials and three of the most common materials that are available are balsa wood, basswood, and plywood. When selecting the material, there's a couple trade-offs that you want to consider. Balsa tends to be very, very light in weight and is very easy to work with. However, you would need a thicker balsa fin than you would some of the other materials. Basswood and plywood are about the same in terms of um, their workability, and basswood and plywood tend to be a little bit stronger for a given thickness. So you can come, out, come away with a thinner fin using these materials. However, the trade-off is, even with the thinness, they tend to weigh a little bit more. Now let's talk about payloads. Payload sections are another component of your rocket. They're used to hold the object that make up your mission, for example, an egg or an electronic instrument to measure altitude. In this particular rocket, the payload section is actually a tube of the same diameter as your main body tube. In it, you have a bulkhead made of balsa and the nose cone. The payload section exists in between. An important consideration when you design your payload section is that it has to be accessible, yet the two ends need to be very tight so that they don't separate during flight. Another important part of your payload section is the connection that you make between the payload section and your recovery system. In this case, we're going to use a screw eye into the balsa bulkhead. To make a good connection, you screw it in to develop the hole, back that screw out, place a little bit of glue in the hole you've just created, then screw the screw eye back in that glue filled hole. Screw it down all the way tight, allow that to dry, and that's going to make a good tight connection that won't come apart. Another kind of payload would be an egg capsule that's commercially available. This plastic egg capsule gives you a lot of room to place a single egg. You could actually place something below the egg if you so desired. You assemble the egg capsule, add some foam for protection of your egg, tape it and place it on top of your rocket and you're ready to fly. Some examples of materials that you can use for padding your egg capsule include bubble wrap, plastic insulation from pipes, and also compartments from an egg carton. These are all excellent materials that you can use to pad your egg. One example of a rocket that has a two compartment payload section would be this rocket. The top section is for the egg and this middle section is an electronics bay that you could put an altimeter, for example, in, put it back together. Good tight fit and you're ready for flight. Now let's talk about recovery systems. Recovery systems are used to hold the rocket together and consist of components that start out with a shock cord. The shock cord can be made of an elastic material, commonly available in sewing supply stores, 
round elastic as opposed to flat. And also Kevlar cord is sometimes used. A lot of people use Kevlar cord when in areas closer to the motors and to the hot ejection gases. It's a little bit more resistant to the heat than the elastic. And also, it's important that your cord does have some give. If you're using Kevlar, we tend to recommend that you put a piece of elastic at the top of it. Another part of your recovery system is a parachute or a streamer. The parachute that um, this particular parachute is a cloth parachute, a little bit heavier in weight, but it's a lot more, uh, more ideal for heavier rockets. A plastic parachute, a lot lighter in weight and not as able to withstand some of the, the heavier rockets that you might use in model rocketry. Another type of recovery device is a streamer. This particular streamer, pretty simple material. Go to a party supply store, happy birthday banner, works well for a streamer. This one tends to be pretty long for a, a little bit larger rocket. Crepe paper is also a good material that you can use for a streamer. Launch lugs are another component of your rocket that are important. The launch lug attaches is the attachment point of your rocket to your launch rod. The launch lugs come in a variety of different sizes. They're made of cardboard, pretty easy to install. It's important when you install the launch lugs to make sure that you align them properly. This is a good example of the need for alignment. In this particular rocket, the nose cone section is a little bit larger in diameter than the body tube, so we'd actually make a standoff to help align the launch lug. Now let's talk about engine mounts. Another important consideration is the engine mount. And the engine mount is going to be important in the rockets that we've been showing you in that the engine diameter is a little bit smaller than the body tube diameter. For example, the rocket that we're constructing, the body diameter is about an inch and a half. The diameter of your engine is a little bit less than an inch. So we need somehow to build up the diameter to make this fit inside. It's real simple to do. They're commercially available in kits available at hobby stores, but I'll show you quickly what the components are and how they're going to fit together. Have a the body tube that's the same diameter as your engine. We have an engine retention clip and an engine block. The engine block fits in to the fore end of your engine tube. Tape on the the clip for um, so it's secure. Then we're going to take our coupler ring and the um, paper tubes, glue them onto the coupler ring, make sure that they line up correctly, glue on the inside, again glue the two pieces together. Once they're dry, then we can just slide this whole assembly onto the engine mount and, and we're ready to go. This is an example of a completed engine mount. Again, the coupler ring, our white rings, the motor retention. That's going to fit in. The motor then fits right in, and we're ready to go. Now we're going to tell you about how to construct your model rocket.